Hello, it's Morgan here from Pipois, and I am just going to do a video for you guys on Saju, which is an embroidery shop in Paris, and I was fortunate enough to be able to go there a week or two ago, I want to say. Um, I was on holiday with my family, and we were passing back through Paris on our way home. And um, it's a lovely embroidery shop that I had wanted to visit for some time and uh, been on their website, which I encourage you to do. It's wonderful. It's almost as wonderful as being in the shop itself. Um, and so I knew of it and I knew that I wanted to check it out. And um, so, as I say, we were on our way back up from the south of France and um, we were going through Paris on our way home. And so I thought uh, I would stop in and take a poke around and see what they had. Um, Saju is, uh, it's an old French brand that has been um, bought by a woman, and I'll put a longer story up in the blog, but um, she's bought it and restored it. And brought back a lot of the old monogram books and put um, just beautiful branding across a number of products that are useful in embroidery and sewing, but also somewhat crucially in cross stitch, which is a kind of embroidery technique, which um, is one that I practice less, but I'm getting the feeling when I look at French embroidery books versus British embroidery books that it's really quite big in France. Um, whereas even most of the embroidery work that I'm fond of doing is more kind of crewel work and stump work and silk shading um, and the kinds of things that you can do at the Royal School of Needlework and the kinds of classes they do there. The French are very big on white work and also cross stitch and those are, it's interesting because both of those disciplines involve um, a lot of stitch counting and a lot of precision and I think that's why I don't like it. <laughs> um, I like to be a little bit more creative about it, but it's also a very specific kind of discipline that yields really beautiful products. So I think um, there were certain things that says you that weren't quite for me in terms of the work I like doing, but it was also an amazing experience. So I thought I'd just show you the things that I picked up. So let's get started here. One of the first things that they're known for, and I'm sorry, I'm in a sort of very casual Saturday look here with messy hair and no makeup and all of that. Um, Saturdays. <laughs> um, one of the things that they're known for is thread. And they do this um, wool. And it, this is the print um, from a company called Len Sans Pair. And this is a very old, historic French brand. Again, you know, I'll put more information about it on the blog, but it's an old French brand and it's made in Lille, which is in um, the north part of France. And it's also is a very kind of traditional thread based region of France because it's also where a lot of lace is made, certainly where it was made, but still is Lille. And, kind of Calais and those areas in northern France that are really kind of between France and England actually. Um, and this is an old French brand and they do wool threads that are really good for embroidery. Um, and really classically used for cruel work. So I got a number of different colors in this and I'll show you all the colors. I got. Um, for these, because it's wool work, I thought I probably would use it to do some Christmas embroidery. And I don't know exactly what that'll be yet, but so I got it in mostly Christmassy kind of colors. Um, reds and really bright reds and greens in some nuances. So. Um, the greens are in three different shades, for example, so that they can be used to create nuance in the um, in any kind of like leaf work. 
shadows and things like that. And then similarly in the reds, these are quite pinky, these reds, but I think that's a bit more fun. Um, and using them together, you can get sort of like shadows and main part and highlight colors, probably how it would work it. And then I also picked up a navy blue and sort of a blue gray, just because those are great colors that I use a lot. Um, I don't have exact prices of anything. If you are interested, I can let you know, but equally you can just go on the Saiju website and um, they have a ton of stuff on there, pretty much everything. So you can find out just by going on. Um, they're not inexpensive, for sure, um, as threads, and so you have to be <laughs> pretty committed. Um, and to use them, I think, you know, for me, I'll just use them for special projects, really. Um, so I did that. And then other threads. This is a line of um, cottons that they actually produce themselves. So um, these are the kinds of, they come in these paper cartons. And they're, these are just the sort of factory ones. Um, they make, Saiju is interesting because they do um, embroidery, obviously, but also box work and lace making and sewing and a couple other very specific kind of traditional French crafts as they relate to sewing. And a lot of the box work um, is to hold sewing supplies and um, so you can buy beautiful boxes there. I have so many boxes. I am a bit of a box junkie but I do have so many at this point that I only buy them if I find something that is really different or really is a print that um, resonates with me. Um, so it just didn't work out this visit for me that there was anything I needed needed but they also if you buy a number of threads you can take them out in these boxes which are what comes from the factory effectively they're just how they store them in the shop but I think they're quite lovely and it's nice because if these threads as I say they're not that inexpensive and so as long as they're in these paper boxes they won't rub in your sewing kit and they'll just be um, a bit more preserved. Um, so in this I got a lot more of these colors just because I really I really liked the sheen to the cotton. I'm not sure. Sorry it's a very loud airplane. Okay so this is a price tag so this is 250 euros which is a lot. Um, but they're this really sort of sheeny um, cotton, which is lovely, I think, in fact, in embroidery. And it comes, it looks like it comes as four strands, but typically threads come in six, so I don't know until I unravel one. Um, that's just sort of what it looks like here. And um, maybe it is four. Um, I got these again in some nuanced colors, so you can see I got three different shades of pink here. These two are very subtle difference. This is a bit peachier and this is a bit pinker. And I got a white. So I got a couple that can be used in psych golds in a very kind of antique way. And these are variations on blues. Everything is um, in keeping with a sort of pastel theme, but also most crucially in the color palette of Pipois, because it's most likely that that's what I'll use these for. And again, some variations in greens. This is more the Pipois color palette. And obviously I couldn't color match exactly to our Pantones, so it's just as close as I could get, but I'm happy with the result. So those were the cottons. And then for fun, I picked up this um, gold metallic thread, which would be nice to use as accents and embroidery. Whether I use it for people or not, I don't know. Um, it is made in France as well, and it's called Etu le monde Sux, which is, I think, like an abbreviation for And All the World Succeeds, which is a sweet name. Um, just sort of a fun, playful thread to give you something to, you know, do fun projects with. And then as thread accessories, um, I got a number of these 
thread holders. They do really sweet patterns. Um, something funny in my camera, but so basically you just you wrap the threads through these points and once you take it off of here and to make it easier to work with you can wrap it onto these and I find that's really useful and actually these cards are really well done because you can see there's this little slit here where the thread holds and so actually it's probably quite easy to take it off there and unwrap it and work with it but I also buy a lot of DMC threads and threads that just come in those long spools not spool isn't the right word but for lack of a better one um, and those I find I always mess up they get really knotted when I'm pulling on them and I always take the wrong end and so they get a bit messy and so the idea is that you just wrap it around here and that'll secure it while you're working, which is great. Um, that's really useful. And then Seju, they just do adorable ones of these. And, they, and again, she's brought back all these old logos and patterns. These are lovely too. I just thought I got a pack of these then again, because I think I'll end up using these all the time, but um, you can't really see them that well, but they are like circus guys rolling on circus wheels. Which is very sweet. Um, I think either that or they're spinning yarn or they're on a bike. But they're in vaguely prison style tops. So I don't really know. But I thought they were cute. And then um, just a couple other little things. I got this magnet. I have a number of um, magnet solutions that I use um, when I'm embroidering, mostly for holding needles on the work. But this is good just to pick up loose pins and things. And as I have small children around, that's always important. And dogs. Um, I don't have anything like this, and I liked its size. I can't figure out what this pin does at the top. So if you guys know, tell me. <laughs> that would be great. I'd probably throw it out if no one tells me because I did ask at the store and she said it didn't really have any important functionality and so you can just get rid of it. And then I got um, a pack of needles and I asked specifically about needles for cross stitch and I'll tell you why in a minute. And she just gave me this pack that has like a few different ones, six different needles at um, three diameters, so two of each diameter. And um, I have a bunch of needles, but um, she said this was for cross stitch and they do all these, these little needle books and all these different patterns. You can pitch, pick which one you like the best. And I just, I like the blue and pinks and again, felt like that was closest to our color palette. Um, and then I also got, this is a thread organizer, and again, they do these in all sorts of patterns, and they're wonderful, and I was tempted to get more than one, um, because basically what you do is when you're taking on a project, it's got these holes along each side, and it's made of kind of a stiff cardboard-like material, and, um, what you do is you just you take your threads in your different colors and you put them on the hole so that you just organize your project and you keep all of your colors in one place for each project and I haven't really needed to work that way previously I've just I have them in little embroidered bags um, actually this is one that I use for example quite often it's got um, my initial on it and it's just very pretty and so I'll keep everything for one project in there for example but I think there's a reason that people use these and probably I'll get quite into it I was tempted to get more than one but they weren't inexpensive and I thought let's figure out how to use it first um, so a couple then really interesting things they're doing a collaboration with the Museum of Toile de Jouy at the moment, and I 
you know, I'm totally in love with Toile de Jouy, obviously. And um, so I was really excited when I heard about this collaboration they were doing and I just sort of pillaged the store looking for anything that was Toile de Jouy and actually there wasn't a ton. Um, and some of the style of what they do feels in the spirit of Toile de Jouy anyway. And the Toile de Jouy's that they did have were a bit unconventional, but they were still beautiful. So beautiful that I was convinced to buy a couple of the Toile de Jouy patterns, even though it's cross stitch work and I don't really do cross stitch traditionally. So this is an example of one and you can see this beautiful pattern. And the kit comes with the pattern and um, and then it tells you, you know, what the colors are and things that you should use. And of course you can buy all of it there. So it gives you the supply list on the outside and then the pattern is on the inside. Um, and I just thought that was so gorgeous. I mean, unbelievable. And I know myself, and as soon as I saw it, I just thought I want to do entire rooms in it, and how beautiful would it be to have, you know, batting down on the walls of my bedroom all in this print, and it could be a project I take on for years to come, and that's crazy. But I might do it anyway, or I might try. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just absolutely lovely. So it is done in cross-stitch. And again, there's a part of me that thought maybe I can take the pattern out and adapt it to embroidery and use like satin stitching or something rather than cross stitching. Um, but I don't know if that's really feasible or not. And also I figured what I do is take the patterns out and then they sell these bits of linen which are in the right grade for cross stitch. So I thought I'd just practice on a couple and see how I do. Um, and then think about what kind of scale I want to do it on. So the second pattern that I've got is a really traditional Toile de Jouy pattern. And it's beautiful. And I think there's lots of things that you could do with this that are really lovely. And it just shows you um, some little patterns that are included. And um, all the other things they're doing, these are colorway options of this Toile. So there's a blue, a purple, a green, and like a beige. Um, and the large illustration is obviously in the red, it's like a red and a pink, and the same thing, they give you the instructions on the back of the supplies and the fabric and the threads, and then you can pick up all the supplies there. Um, I don't know that it's the twelve that I would choose to do my whole bedroom in, just in terms of the narratives and the stories, but I do think it's really beautiful and I want to do something with it, so time will tell. As I say, first I'm going to try it on these smaller pieces and then see where I go from there. And because I was there, I did buy a larger piece of the linen that they use for a cross stitch as well, um, so that in case this just turns into a pillow, um, I have the right size for that. And then the last thing I got, which really kind of took my fancy, but I don't know whether, again, I'll, I'll be able to handle it. Um, they do these beautiful books and they do them on all different topics, and this one is on the art of hand lace, and I just fell in love with that, um, the idea of making lace with your hands, really, and the book has the patterns for it inside, and I probably can't show you too, too much, but I'll show you as like an example. So. This is like what a page looks like on the inside, and these are different kinds of laces that you can make. And um, it's really just extraordinarily beautiful. And what you do is you take the patterns from inside of this, and then you take these kinds of these little sticks, and you use them to do the hand lace. They also do classes in tatting there, which is a very specific form of hand lace, and if you Google it, there are YouTube videos on how to tat. Um, and that's sort of a lost art that's lovely, and you just think of all the times when, you know, you want to keep your hands busy, you're on the tube in the morning on the way to the office, or you're in a long car ride, or, you know, any time when you feel you can make your hands more productive and create something beautiful. I love the idea of making lace, and um, 
I think these are probably a bit complex to do in the tube on your commute in the morning, but maybe in front of the television when your husband's watching football and you're really bored secretly. Um, all sorts of occasions. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. I don't know whether or not we will have a long journey together, but I think it's cool. So, that's everything really. It was enough. Did enough damage. And it was a really lovely experience. I encourage you to go visit them if you're in Paris and um, to see what you find there. And it depends a bit on the disciplines you're into. If you're interested in box making, they have lovely things. If you're interested in sewing, they have all sorts of beautiful threads for sewing machines. And um, as I say, tons of stuff for cross stitch. So for me, I really want to get a sample of a number of different things and mostly as they relate to embroidery, but also just some fun crafts to explore. And I bought some gifts and things for other people as well. And um, I just, I, I love what they're doing. I'm, I'm really happy for them and the success that they're having. I think the way that they have mastered taking on this old business and reinventing it and using the beauty of these old logos and all of the old illustrations and keeping embroidery alive, but keeping these images alive and just creating a beautiful, fun store. The website is fabulous. It's all translated really well into English and tells you the story of everything on the website. And you can pick up even small articles there, you know, and ship them, which is great. And including, you know, some of the threads and things. And they also do classes in the shop. and. I just, I think it's a lovely kind of true heritage business that's been reinvented in a modern way, but taking the best parts forward, which is in some of the iconic imagery and some of the threads and things which are things we still use today. And I didn't mention monogram books, um, and obviously I have a deep passion for monograms, and they do, they have books of all their old monograms there. I didn't get any because um, there, you can order them online. And um, they are mostly cross-stitch. And without knowing if cross-stitch is going to be my thing, I do have a lot of other monogram libraries that aren't cross-stitch, so I thought best to kind of see how I feel about cross-stitch before I commit to buying more monograms. The toile I couldn't resist because that's actually really hard to find and is such a distinctly French thing. And in doing it, they're collaborating with the Museum of the Toile de Juillet, which you can see on the packaging, so I thought that was kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But um, but monograms, as beautiful as they are, I just I want to wait and see how cross-stitching goes for me. But I would encourage you, if you like cross-stitching um, and you like monograms, that's one of the things they're most famous for, and, and that's one of the things that they are re-releasing that were part of the heritage business. Um, and really beautiful, again, they do them in books that look a lot like this and they have posters of them um, and they're just they're really lovely so I would definitely encourage you to check those out if you go to the shop or if you look them up online so um, I hope that was interesting for you please do go to their site keep Saju alive I don't think they're having any trouble they are just a wonderful little business but I encourage you to visit them and thank you